Today I'm going to do a quick unboxing and initial first impressions of my Staccato CS. This is my second Staccato. I also have a Staccato XC. I know they're completely two different type of handguns. Um, I got them both from Dawson Precision in Texas. Dawson Precision mounted the red dots, sighted it in at 25 yards or the initial sight in, and got it to my FF, got both guns to my FFL within two days. So they're really easy to work with. They have a really good inventory and I, I just like ordering from them. They're really easy to work with. So let's see what, let's go ahead and look inside here. So the first compartment is the magazines. All right, so 16 round magazines. There's two here. There's also one in the handgun. I saw that in there when I picked it up at, at my FFL. Uh, these magazines are proprietary and they only go to the CS. How that's going to work out over time, um, only time's going to tell there. I do wish that they used a magazine that was compatible with some of their other guns or a magazine that a standard kind of a pattern magazine. But I understand why they didn't. They slimmed this magazine out, which allowed them to slim out the overall firearm for concealed carry. So that's uh, what the CS is intended for. It's content intended for concealed carry. I wanted to go out and get a few additional magazines for this uh, handgun, but at this time, at least, they're not available from Staccato just to order these magazines. They're, what I was told is they're working on filling all the orders for this firearm, and then somewhere in the middle to the latter part of 2023, we should be able to order these magazines um, from them, I'm going to get a, a few more. Let's just say that I'm going to get a few more magazines uh, just in case this turns out to be a, you know, only gun that they make with these magazines and they discontinue it or something one day. So let's see what's in the main compartment. The main compartment, first thing is the standard paperwork. That's my shipping label. Uh, this is just the safety. And on this side is going to be the oiling instructions for uh, 2011. And then here is the handgun. So I actually like the way this magazine sticks out a little bit because if something ever happened, you can grab a hold of this base plate and strip this magazine out with some force. You're, it's not gonna be stuck there. So this is actually, uh, while it might look like, hey, that sticks out of the bottom, uh, there's, a, there's a use for this. In case your magazine malfunctions or you have a, a malfunction of your handgun, you need to remove the magazine, you can apply for pressure pulling this out. Um, just in general, I like the way this the magazine comes out. When it's ejected, there's no rounds in this. Let's make sure the gun is clear. The gun is clear. All right, so initial first impressions are this isn't a subcompact handgun. This is more along the lines of the Glock 19 size handgun. This is 22 ounces and some change, I think, is the weight on this. It actually doesn't feel that heavy holding it. It's really well balanced. Um, the grip, the stippling on this grip is, is awesome. I like the texture a whole lot. The extended beaver tail is not, not causing me any problems there. At this point, I'll have to say, you know, let you know if it causes any problems when I'm shooting the gun. Um, standard grip safety. I don't find these to be any problem. Let's check the, the, the slide is really, really smooth. I'm not putting that, I mean, it's not as effortless as the XC, but this is not intended uh, for the same tasks that the XC is intended for. This is more of a daily carry handgun. It has an external extractor. Um, they did that for reliability. I really like that because if you're gonna carry this every day, external extractor um, to increase reliability is a good idea. Uh, the site on here again is the 509T, if I hadn't said that already, and Dawson put their plate and sights on so that you can lower one-third co-witness with the optic. 
Um, and I think for a carry gun with an optic, I'm all for optics, but they're electronic, battery could go dead, something could go wrong with the optic and then when you need it, it's good to have just standard backup iron sights. So lower one third co witness is the way to go um, and still have a, a red dot. Let's check the trigger. So a little bit of take up, a little bit of creep right there. Not much creep at all, a little bit, not much. Um, let's check the reset. That, that was a really short reset. And this, when I pulled it again, there was, there felt like there was no creep on this, on the second shot. So if anyone um, is coming like I am from basic polymer striker fired handguns, the trigger on these 2011s is just a different level. They, they remind me of uh, hunting rifle triggers almost. They're very, they're a little bit heavier than that, obviously, um, the pull wise, right? But the way that they have very little take up and very little creep and a really clean break that's just the, these triggers are, are excellent um, compared to your standard striker fire polymer handgun like a Glock or a SIG. Uh, so let's compare it to my current everyday carry gun by compare just initial size comparison. So my everyday carry is the SIG P365. I've already taken the magazine out and I've already cleared it prior to this video. Um, so this gun is 17 ounces, it's way lighter, and even with, and with the standard 10 round magazine, so it's got six rounds less than the magazine, I cannot get my pinky on this handgun. I, I only get a two finger purchase. Um, I don't really have a problem controlling it, but that's all I get is a two finger purchase. So let's check the trigger here. Decent amount of take up. Decent amount of creep, or about twice the creep, let's just say about twice the creep is the staccato. Let's check the reset. That's a pretty long reset. And there's the, the creep shows back up on the second on the second pull. So even after the reset, which is I'm I'm guessing about twice the reset is the way it felt of this. Well, way more of a reset than staccato. Staccato had barely any reset. The second pull actually had just as much creep as the first pull with the P365, whereas the second pull with the Staccato, I didn't feel any creep at all. It just broke. Um, standard uh, external extractor. Um, this this has uh, the tritium sights on it, and it's not optics ready. But this gun is 17 ounces. Now let's see about the... the um, thickness so the thickness of the handle this is not even a comparison this is not comparable the the p365 is way thinner let's check the top of the slide slide thickness believe it or not looks about the same it could be due to the blocky nature of the p365 the staccato is really rounded on the slide and let's check the heights Not counting the beaver tail, okay? Not, and maybe we should be, but not counting the beaver tail, the P365 is still way shorter. It has a 3.1 inch barrel. Um, the staccato is a 3.5 inch barrel. So the slide length, this, the P365 is a decent amount shorter. And then height wise, um, the P365 is uh, way shorter in the handle grip in the hand grip let's check it with so my second mag that i carry as a backup is the 12 round magazine let's check it with the 12 round magazine in it even with the 12 round magazine i don't know if you can tell that i'm trying to get the camera to focus but the staccato is about two eighths of an inch longer in the handle uh, the other thing is the handle itself is just is just wider here across 
on the Staccato than it is on the P365. So the P365, all in all, is a this is a subcompact. I carry this in my pocket um, with the 10 round magazine in it when I'm wearing shorts. So this is a much smaller, much lighter handgun. In fact, yeah, it's way pull that off. It's way uh, lighter. Um, let's ch let's check. Now that, now that I know that this is a, a bit larger, or, or show that this is a bit larger of a handgun, it's not a subcompact, let's check it against the G19. So I have one right here. Um, take the magazine out. This is cleared. This was, this was actually my first uh, carry gun. Um, I don't want to say anything bad about this gun. I really like it. Uh, it was my, like I said, it was my first carry gun. One of the things I did do on it is I replaced the sights. I put uh, tritium sights on it because I don't, I don't like the Glock, uh, the blocky Glock sights. I mean, they work, but for my eyes, I really don't like the shape of them. Um, all right, let's check the, and this gun is 21 ounces and some change. So it's about an ounce lighter than the staccato and the and the weight on the staccato is unloaded without the optics without the larger sights and the plate and the additional plate that it takes actually to mount the 509t so that's that is just the gun is 22 ounces so let's check the trigger pull on the glock i can't tell if that's take up or creep because the whole thing has a little bit of pressure that feels like the wall and then it broke. So there's a lot of take up slash creep there. Now let's check the reset. A lot of re a, a long travel there. And then there was no take up or, or no creep on the on the second shot. I don't I don't know if that's there's no take up or creep on the second shot, but the reset, the travel was even more than the P365 by a considerable bit. So now let's check the the length. This has a four inch barrel, 4.1, something like that, inch barrel. Okay, so grip width, about the same. We'll switch it around here. Again, not including the beaver tail. The staccato is is shorter, about an inch shorter. The slide thickness. The 19 looks thicker. Again, the staccato is rounded. I can't tell, but the 19 looks way thicker. And then the handle height, the grip height. Now that's some place that that the that the G19 actually has a shorter grip length, even without the mat. Neither one of these have the magazines in them. A shorter grip length. So the staccato grip length is a couple of maybe three and four eighths of an inch so half an half an inch um longer on the staccato so again i haven't shot this handgun so that's my first impressions i'll do a separate review on the hollow sun 509t like i said this is my first uh closed emitter optic and I really am interested in that for a carry gun. This compares more to the size of the G19 than it does to a subcompact like the P365. I'm interested to see how it shoots. Um, I don't expect it to shoot like a full-size gun because it's not a full-size gun. But with that trigger, if the recoil is manageable with as fast of a reset as uh, and as clean clean as that trigger is this gun probably shoots incredibly fast so i will take it to the range shoot some video of that and share it with everyone um, if you'd like to see that please like and subscribe to my channel and i i did buy this I, i'll go ahead and say i did buy this with my own money and at the time of this video it was three thousand eighty eight dollars as it 
is here with the three magazines, the five, the gun, and the 509T, and the Dawson uh, sights that allow you to do the co-witnessing through your optic, which again, I think is mandatory. If you're going to have a red dot, red dots are really cool, but if they go down, you're going to want your irons. So like and subscribe to my channel if you want to see me actually review this handgun and, and give my feedback on how it actually functions. Thanks. Have a good day.